Okay, I'm going to do this video in two parts. I'm going to let you know all about the latest Gucci Alchemist Garden Collection fragrances. Tears from the Moon. Love it, your darkest. I'm going to cut the video and I'm going to go figure out a rank list of everything in the Gucci Alchemist Garden Collection fragrances that were launched since 2020. So not the initial launch in 2019, but everything that came out from 2020 to today, all coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. I've been excited for these fragrances. I ordered my fragrances from Selfridges. I do have their yearly uh, shipping plan, I guess. It's like 55, 60 bucks. You pay for it and they do free shipping every uh, day that you pay, you buy things from there. So I like that about the buying from Selfridges in comparison to buying from Harrods because Harrods charges $45 per shipping. Whereas with Selfridges, I just pay like almost $60. I think it's 55, but it could be like closer to 60. And then all my shipping is free for a whole year. And that kind of pays for itself. And then I also do Rakuten and Rakuten gives me per percentages back like when I bought these it was six percent back so uh, I have a Rakuten link in the info box as well but yeah I'm excited for these two new fragrances I'm, I'm a fan of this collection but sometimes it seems to be underwhelming and when you can compare it to something like another luxury brand Louis Vuitton their fragrances or fragrances are really really great but also their bottles are really really great where I have the you know some problems with the bottles from Gucci Alchemist Garden collection they're not not the best and you're paying a top dollar for these fragrances they should get their bottles up uh, in quality uh, like Louis Vuitton the other thing is these bottles are not refillable the Louis Vuitton bottles are so that's kind of the disappointing part but either way excited to let you know about these two fragrances but have you guys gotten your nose on this particular uh, two fragrances and are you a fan of this collection? I'll let you know all about them but I'm going to let you know if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So these two are the latest two fragrances from the Gucci Alchemist Garden Collection. All of the fragrances are created by Alberto Moria from this collection although he also does other fragrances from Gucci but he is under the creative direction of the creative director at Gucci Alessandro Michele. So these are 100 ml, $330 Eau de Parfum concentration. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with Tears from the Moon first. Tears from the Moon is a floral fragrance and uh, the thing is both I thought were going to be more feminine leaning because they're in the white bottles but then again uh, the last day of summer which is one of my favorites from this collection is in the white bottle and the eye of the ti uh, the eyes of the tiger is also in the white bottle so uh, both of them are not going to be fresh but uh, according to the notes from Gucci's website Tears from the Moon features notes of Lily of the Valley, White Peony, and Stephanotis. So I had to look up this flower. Not a very recognizable flower. I'm not too familiar with it. I know my Jasmine, Gardenia, Lily, Tuberose, and things like that, but I hadn't heard of Stephanotis. So I looked it up. Apparently it's a blend of Jasmine and Lilies, and it's a sweet fragrance. So we shall see how it is. So this is the white box right here. Uh, these uh, presentation is really really nice for this collection. The bottles are inspired by, by apothecary bottles according to the Gucci website and some articles I have read. Each bottle comes in a little sleeved uh, baggie like this and depending on the box and the bottle color the baggie is going to be the same color uh, and then you've got Gucci written on it right there. So I haven't smelled these. Nowhere to be found uh, here in the city Last I remember looking for them at the Gucci boutique, they don't even have them there, but when the first initial drop happened in early 2019, they were exclusively sold at Saks Fifth Avenue. And since 2020, like mid 2020, they are no longer there. They got replaced there by the fragrances of uh, Christian Louboutin. So let's go ahead and smell Tears from the Moon. So, is anybody familiar with Stephanotis? Do you know this particular note? I do enjoy Lily of the Valley and fragrances, and I also enjoy Peony. So right off the bat, it's very fresh. Definitely very, very floral. It's just basically all flowers here. It's sweet. Uh, I'm also getting some dewy, like wetness uh, and greenness. Lily of the Valley always has green qualities as a smell. 
and I like that about this particular flower. It could be a little... It's very spring-like to me. It could be a little animalic. Uh, I think Lily of the Valley can go in the animalic direction. This one does not to me, at least from the strip it doesn't. But you know, it's, a, it's a, just a floral bouquet. It's sweet, it's pretty, it's definitely feminine leaning, and it's very, very fresh. I like it. Do I love it though, that's the thing. First impression is quite good. Let me know if you've sampled Tears from the Moon. Are you a fan of this one? Tears from the Moon in the white bottle, and these bottles are gorgeous. They're really, really great bottles, but I think I mentioned in another video, I had a bottle of a Chant for the Nymph that stopped spraying, because Chant for the Nymph is such a sweet fragrance, and I think its sweetness kind of corroded the sprayer. It stopped spraying, so I had to open it up, and I, I had to, uh, dispute the transaction because it happened like six months after I, I bought that bottle But I've got a replacement for it now. In fact, I'm going to talk about it in this video after I pause and figure out this uh, rank list. So the next fragrance is Love at Your Darkest So Love at Your Darkest I think came out just after Tears from the Moon, so We shall see how it is. It is focusing on black pepper and incense and if you've been watching me or following me, I mentioned that I'm not the biggest fan of black pepper and fragrances. And to me also, black pepper and incense kind of remind me of one another, whereas black pepper has the spiciness, but it kind of smells like incense. And then incense has some light spiciness, and it reminds me of black pepper. So it's interesting that they've combined the two notes here in this particular fragrance. So this is, again, created by Alberto Morias. He's been creating all of the fragrances in this collection. Man, he is such a busy guy. I really... I, I like him because I also follow his Instagram account and he's constantly posting photos, photos with family, photos in uh, at work, at his studio, with artwork and his fragrances. So it's kind of a cool account if you are into following the life of a perfumer, a master perfumer, because he's been creating fragrances I think since the 70s. I mean, he didn't really kind of make it until the late 80s, uh, early 90s is when I started really seeing uh, his fragrances. Although I didn't know his fragrances until I started really getting into this and discovering that he's created some of my favorite fragrances uh, from uh, those years. But Love at Your Dark, a similar bottle and packaging, both in the white uh, collection. So... This one definitely will be the opposite of Tears from the Moon, whereas that one needs fresh and floral. This one's dark and spicy and woody, perhaps a little smoky as well. Oh, okay. Very, very peppery. This is very, very peppery. Um, if you've ever gone to a Sheena Small tree, like if you're near it, we have a lot of them here in California, and they have these little pink peppercorn. It's the California pepper tree. That's what this smells like. Like if you pick the berries off of the tree and kind of rub it, and on your fingers you smell that kind of smoky, peppery, kind of almost like incense, but not quite. It's more like a spice, and there's definitely warmth there. And this kind of smells like it. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't do much to me, for me though, because it is a little one-dimensional, or maybe Maybe I should say a little li linear, but also, as I was saying, I'm not the biggest fan of spice. I, I kind of like the, the spiciness here because it does remind me of that tree, whereas it's a, a little sticky kind of a spice uh, when you're rubbing your fingers on those little berries, the pink pepper berries. Now, this one's actually nice. I like this one a lot more than the other one, the Tears from the Moon. Tears from the Moon, I've, I've smelled quite a bit of, and not the actual flower, I mean, not the actual fragrance, but the actual uh, kind of uh, fragrance. So, um, but I'm, I'm digging the Love at Your Darkest. It reminds me a little bit of the spiciness in um, the, uh, the Last Day of Summer fragrance. Uh, but it's definitely a completely different uh, kind of a fragrance. I still like The Last Day of uh, Summer a lot more than Love It Your Darkest, but I kind of like this one, just because of the fact that it reminds me of those uh, pink pepper uh, berries off of the Sheena Small tree. All right, I'm gonna pause the video now and figure out the, the rank list. And basically, I'm going to be speaking about all the fragrances in this collection that were launched from 2020 till now. I have a separate video of, of uh, the entire collection up until 2020, if you wanna go catch that video to find out more about the other fragrances. But I wanted to just to keep it to the 2020, 21, and 2022 uh, fragrances. All right, now that I've paused the video and tested these two fragrances out on my skin, 
I kind of come to a con consensus and uh, figured out where they would land on this list. But to start the list, there are seven total fragrances in this collection, the Alchemist Garden Collection, that were launched from 2020 on to today. And we're going to start off with a Midnight Stroll at number seven. So this is my least, one of my least favorite fragrances in this collection. I think it just seems overly resinous and dark and smoky, balsamic and very, very powdery, dry incense fragrance. I would call this a woody aromatic fragrance. It was launched in 2020. It does feature notes of incense, cade wood, cypress. And basically you're experiencing very, very resinous experience. It's almost like the resins come to life in perfume for if you've ever, uh, you know, held like a resin, frankincense or myrrh in your hands. It's like, just to imagine that exploding and the powder uh, form of that uh, is what you're wearing. So I find it to be very, very dark wearing experience. And so it just, I don't want to wear it as kind of the, the, the thing I'm kind of leading up to. It just doesn't, you know, draw me in to wear it. So I have put it here, but there's fans of this out there. I know there are because uh, they like this kind of a fragrance. But for me, a Midnight Stroll is at number seven. And if I did a rank list of the entire collection as of now, it would still be at the very, very bottom. So anyway, Midnight Stroll at seven. So at number six, it sadly is Tears from the Moon. Why is Tears from the Moon here? So I put it on my hand here and I'm smelling it. There's something in this fragrance that I don't care for. I, I don't know what it is. Is it the Stephanotis? I, I don't know. It's almost like a vegetal kind of something like earthy but green and vegetal that's contrasting with Lily of the Valley and the White Peony and it doesn't wear make for a very beautiful fragrance. You know it might be beautiful for some others but for me I didn't find it to be all that great. It also seems very uh, linear and minimalistic so it doesn't have a lot of depth to it. So unfortunately I wanted to love this one and it ends up at number six. So it might be competing against some of the other fragrances in the white bottles. For example, the one that features Mimosa or the one that features Violet. Uh, but we shall see. I'll have to do a separate video later. But for now, Tears from the Moon that just launched this year is at number six. And sadly, Love at Your Darkest is at number five. But I did enjoy it more than the other fragrance, uh, Tears from the Moon, but I think Love at Your Darkest definitely deserves the number five spot because everything else after this is really, really great. I really do enjoy. I've spoken about them quite a, a, a lot on different videos, but Love at Your Darkest, I already mentioned, it's a woody, spicy fragrance. You know, it does feature the black pepper, the incense, and cedarwood, and I think it's the fact that it's incense and black pepper together that is not one of my favorite combinations, especially black pepper. I don't really like to wear black peppery fragrances. I'm opening up to it just like I've opened up to white flowers and things like that but still there's something about black pepper it just doesn't appeal to me so much but it is reminding me of that sheena small the pink bear, pepper berries uh, when you actually pick them off of a tree in fact i just did them like just a, a three or four weeks ago i was uh, walking under one and uh, i could smell it under the sun and i picked a, a couple of pink pepper berries and i you know, rub them on my fingers and I could smell that uh, smell. But that's exactly what this particular fragrance smells like, but with a more of a woody characteristics. There's definitely the presence of the cedar wood in this and you can experience the cedar wood on. Yeah, it's nice. And it does a little bit remind me of Last Day of Summer fragrance, but I think the reason it's reminding me of that fragrance is probably they're using the same peppery note here in Love at Your Darkest that they use in Last Day of the Summer, Last Day of Summer. Anyway, Love at Your Darkest at number five. At number four, I've spoken about this recently in some tropical fragrance videos, A Chant for the Nymph from 2020. So interesting, they launched, Gucci launched three Alchemist Garden fragrances in 2020. It was uh, A Midnight Stroll, it was A Chant for the Nymph, and then there's another one that I'm going to get to in a little bit. And this is a bottle that kind of corroded. The sprayers on these bottles are not the best. I wish Gucci, who is a, you know, very, very profitable luxury company, would do something better with their bottles. Because if you compare these bottles to the bottles at uh, Louis Vuitton, uh, they're definitely very, very cheap. Whereas uh, in comparison to the Louis Vuitton bottles, they're very, very luxury. I think Louis Vuitton's fragrances are some of the best sprayers. If you like the best sprayers, go try those fragrances. The other thing is 
as I was saying, these are more expensive than the Louis Vuitton fragrances, whereas those are about 280. They might have increased a little, uh, the price a little recently, but they're about 100 ml for 280. These are 330 for 100 ml. Those are refillable. These are not. But a chant for the nymph is a 2020 launch. It's a sweet tropical floral fragrance. It does feature notes of frangipani, ylang ylang, tr flower, and vanilla. But there's definitely something very very sweet and honeyed in here. Like when you wear this fragrance, even when you're smelling it, uh, it's very very strong. It's very very strong floral tropical beachy warm humid hun under the sun kind of a you know, experience there is a kind of reminder of also like suntan lotion and things like that here but for me it's more of flowers and honeyed very very syrupy powdery experience um the other thing I want to say before I move on to the next fragrance, this is a very strong fragrance in comparison to the two in the white bottle I just talk, talk, spoke to you about, the two new ones. Uh, also, a Midnight Stroll is also very, very strong, but I, I much prefer this one over a Midnight Stroll. I just think it's, you know, it does definitely set a scene for you, like a tropical, floral, very, very, you know, warm, uh, tropics kind of an experience. So, A Chant for the Nymph is at number four. So, in uh, 2021, Gucci Alchemist Garden launched two fragrances. Fragrances. Here's the first of the two. It's uh, 1921, launched in 2021, 100 years. Uh, this is a fresh green citrus fragrance, and I like this one because it is a tart, citrusy experience. Plus, it has you know the bitter orange flower on, in here as well, the neroli. So it's the idea of a citrus uh, fruit, the juiciness, the tartness, the little sourness against the kind of green neroli experience with this one, which makes for a great wearing experience. Really, really fresh, really, really floral, a little sweet, a little tart, and then throw in a little bit of green mossiness for the base note. So it has some oak moss in the base note. So basically you're experiencing a very green, mossy, fresh, lemony kind of a citrus experience. Very, very floral here with the neroli and also a bit sparkling. I, I really do enjoy this one. It's a great smell and it's a perfect a fresh fragrance for the summertime. So 1921 from 2021 is at number three. And this is the second 2021 launch from Gucci's Alchemist Garden Collection, a gloaming night. This is patchouli cinnamon together, uh, together making for a very woody spicy experience. Uh, it also features vetiver. So the idea of patchouli and vetiver together really does work. For example, uh, Montal has a fragrance called uh, Vetiver Patchouli, and then there's Incident Diplomatique from Javoy, which features vetiver and patchouli. Here, it's vetiver and patchouli with lots of warmth. They've thrown in the cinnamon here, and the color totally kind of makes sense for this particular fragrance. It's kind of reddish, kind of dark reddish, blood orange kind of a, a look. But this is a very, very earthy experience. It's very, very warm. It's very, very spicy. It's woody for sure, because patchouli and vetiver definitely act woody. And it's also aromatic. There's some aromatic touches, and eventually, Actually, it becomes kind of a dry balsamic experience, but still experiencing and smelling that cinnamon. The cinnamon is very, very strong in here. If you like cinnamon, this is a cinnamon bomb, I think. But to me, it doesn't smell like a holiday kind of a cinnamon bomb. It's more, I don't know, I think maybe because the patchouli and vetiver in here are so strong, they might tone down that kind of like association with holidays, but it's definitely got a very, very warm, spicy experience. So a gloaming night at number two from the house of Gucci at the Alchemist Garden Collection. And then finally, going back to 2020 when this was launched, this was launched kind of oddly. It wasn't launched everywhere. I think it was a specific uh, Gucci website launch and it came, It was launched, uh, you know, with a book, but the book was sold separately, obviously. Uh, this is Hortus Sanitatis, this one right here at number one. Why is this one at number one? It's a very unique smelling fragrance for me and I love the smell. Very, very much so. It's a woody, spicy fragrance and it features notes of papyrus, vetiver, cedar, ginger. It's interesting. I see a lot of fragrances featuring papyrus with ginger and the ginger here adds the zing and spice to it, some bite to it, a kick to it. But papyrus to me is a very, very unique smell. It's often found in woody fragrances and definitely more masculine leaning fragrances. And to me, papyrus and also Cipriol Nagarmotha has this kind of smell that's associated with vetiver, patchouli, woods, some light spice and things like that. So it definitely is prominent here. You definitely experience the papyrus's unique characteristic. It also has some smokiness and you can totally smell the smokiness here. And to me, it's 
smells like there's like a rosiness under there like something there's a rose under there that's kind of like trying to come out or you've kind of like set your roses on some barbecue and it's like roasting and you can smell how roses smell but there's a distinction of roses with smoke kind of a thing here very very unique fragrance I absolutely love the way this one smells and it wears really really uh, beautifully on me it's very very unique and just like like I said toasted roasted barbecued roses it's it's really really great smell it's Hortus Sanitatis as number one and these as I said are all the fragrances that were launched in 2020 2021 and 2022 uh, they did launch with uh, several other fragrances in 2019 and I have a separate video on the channel uh, the collection has grown and I'll also they have the oils and then they ha they also have the O's. They haven't much focused on the oils and the O's, and I, I I I'm okay with those fragrances. I think the the strength of the collection is these bottles here, the actual fragrances in eau de parfum concentration, uh, and uh, hopefully you know they'll do something unique with the collection and add some maybe x-rays or something we shall see but i just wish they'd get their act together and uh, do something with those bottles because i think i think it's cody that distributes this brand coty c-o-t-y I, I don't know why but you know as i said this is a very very luxury house and they make tons of money they could spend a little money in perfecting their bottles i think and, and then we would uh, be uh, much better off because the sprayers do break and uh, you know as i was saying this one i had to get a replacement because it stopped working. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video uh, in a little uh, two parts. Tears from the Moon, it's sadly, it's disappointing. Um, it doesn't really, there's something weird in this smell uh, that I'm not really, you know, wowed about. And I do have been really, really, I have been really enjoying floral fragrances lately. So this one's a bit of a disappointment. The Love at Your Darkest is a little more interesting. Um, it's turning into kind of a leathery experience on me now. Very, very interesting. It's a dark, smoky, you know, black pepper and uh, incense kind of a uh, experience with the woods. But there's something leathery under there that's kind of creeping in which is makes for a little bit more of a unique experience. Either way, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you want to find out more about this collection, I do have other videos on the channel. Other than that, uh, let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you're a fan of these uh, fragrances. Let me know if you are anticipating the two new fragrances from Gucci. I'd like to see how many of you are out there looking forward to those. Either way, appreciate you tuning in. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.